Hey guys, welcome back. This is Professor Hank, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with Prologue. Okay, we're just going to have a down and dirty intro video. Uh, I'm going to show you just a few things. Uh, we're not going to get into it too much detail. We're just going to get you up and running. So, um, first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to download and install new Prologue. Uh, basically, we're going to go to gprolog.org, download the installer, get it installed, and uh, get going. Um, and then we're going to create our first Prolog program. And I put program in quotes because Prolog isn't, it's not a traditional programming language like uh, what you would have in, with C++ or Python, you know, where you're writing statements. Um, it's a logic language. And so it's more along the lines of creating a database and putting a bunch of facts in there, do a bunch of rules, and then running a query that uh, checks your facts and rules to get you some kind of an answer. Right. And then um, as part of that first, like I said, quote, program, I'm going to show you how to create a fact, uh, show you how to create a rule and show you how to do your first query. Right. Which is just asking your your prologue interpreter, asking your knowledge base, you know, to, to answer some kind of question for you. Right. And then I'll just finish off briefly, um, show you how to do comments um, in prologue. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started and let's go ahead and download and install Prolog, right? So we're going to go to gprolog.org, right? And so you can see that I already got this sucker loaded up, gprolog.org. And this is what the website looks like. It's totally free. Download this, no problem. Click at Table of Contents, click on Download. You're going to be given a bunch of options here. So you just want to pick the operating system that you're going to be working with. And for me, I'm going to be working on a Windows 64 bit system. So I'm going to click this link right here and I'm going to go ahead and save that onto my desktop. All right. And once that's done, I'll go ahead and run that program. Right. And so you can go ahead and just install it, you know, to the default location and, um, you know, or wherever else you want to, wherever else you want to put it. And, um, you know, that should be fine. I'm just going to create a desktop uh, icon and then just do all the defaults here. And you'll see that that install goes pretty, pretty quick. Right. So when you're done, you can go ahead and click finish and launch prologue. And you'll see that we've got ourselves a uh, console. Right. So. And here is where we'll be able to type our prologue commands, you know, load our, our knowledge bases, you know, do debugging, uh, et cetera. Right. So uh, one thing you can do here, if, if you want to make it a little bit easier to read, is you can go under terminal, change font. You know, I'm going to want this to be a little bit bigger. I like console font as opposed to courier. I'll make it like 20 or something like that. And you can see that the font gets bigger. And uh, when it comes time to load and run um, some code, you know, we're going to need to go to file, change directory, and then point that to the file that's got um, our code on it. All right, so we'll go ahead and hit OK. And you'll see that says yes. That means everything uh, happened just fine. And change directory is a command, and this is where I wanted to change my directory to. OK, so let's go ahead and get started with our first prolog program. OK, now there's a couple different modes in which you can work within prolog right so you can uh, go through the console right and you can use the prolog interpreter if you will okay so i could come here and you'll see that we got this question mark in this dash this is the prompt right so the console here is trying to um, or is waiting for us to actually type in some kind of command so for example if i wanted to put hello world on the screen right i could say um write hello world, okay? And that is a command, right? The write hello world. And to mark the end of that command, I use a period, right? So period is like the semicolon in the prologue world. So if I hit enter, you know, you can see uh, hello world. You also see this yes here. So yes or true, those are both equivalent. Basically is what that means is, yeah, everything went great. Uh, I ran the query it was successful uh, everything's awesome okay so another way you can run this is to write your own source code file and as you can see up here in notepad i named this thing demo.pl 
And this first line right here is an example of a rule. More on this in just a bit. But essentially what I'm saying is, is look, I want to write hello world and you know, I'm going to run a query that you're going to match. And when you match that query, you're going to execute this command, right? Okay. So let me show you how that works. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to load our knowledge base. That's what's in here. Just this one line, just this one rule into the prologue interpreter. And then we'll be able to run a query, which will cause hello world to uh, happen on the screen. And I'm going to show you how to load that file. So that file was demo.pl, okay? And uh, I have that saved on my desktop. And so I'm gonna use file change directory to get into the same location as that file. I'm gonna hit okay. Okay, and you'll see the response here, change directory. I could have typed all that out, but new prologue, the, the console allowed me to do this kind of automatically. And so now I can load that file into uh, the interpreter, right? So. The name of the file is demo.pl. I can just type in demo inside these square brackets, you know, hit my period, hit enter, and you can see, look, I'm gonna go ahead and compile this thing and then we're ready to go. Okay, so now, if I wanna see that whole world, I can run a query, just type main uh, period, hit enter, and you can see there's the whole world. Okay, so next up, let me show you how to create uh, a basic fact. So, Prologue, your source code, you're making a knowledge base. Knowledge bases are facts and rules. So if I want to create a, a fact that was relating a couple of things to each other. Uh, for example, um, you know, maybe I wanted to state that you know, California is next to Nevada. Okay, So this would be uh, an entry that I would have inside my source code, a statement as it, as it were and I'm creating something very similar to what you see in predicate logic where I'm setting up a relationship. So next to and um, the arguments inside the parentheses are relating saying California and Nevada are next to each other, right? So it's a fact that's got a couple of elements inside this function like syntax, but I could also say fruit uh, orange, right? So if I do that, I've just got the one thing inside the parentheses, and I'm saying, hey, a fruits, a fruits and orange, right? Or I could say, um, you know, an apple is a fruit. Or I could say that um, a pear is a fruit, fine. You know, and then I'll add a couple more facts up here too, just to set up some queries here in a second. Uh, I could say, well, California is also next to Oregon. And I could say that California is also next to um, you know, Arizona. Okay. All right, so next up, I'm gonna show you how to create a rule, maybe something a little bit more useful than what we had initially, right? So this guy up here on line one was a rule, right? But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add some additional rules uh, and kind of explain maybe a little bit more detail what's going on. So if I wanted to see if it would be possible for me to travel from say uh, California to Arizona, then I can set up a rule, right? So I can name that rule uh, travel, okay? And if I wanna know if I can get from point A to point C, okay? Um, I'm going to type in, you know, I'm going to give a name for my rule here, and I'm also going to say, well, I want to go from point A to point C. Okay, now I also have this operator right here, the colon and the dash, okay? And following that, what I'm going to have is I'm going to have a um, couple of facts that are going to be built into this, the, to this syntax, right? So I can say, well, next to, and well, if we start off at point A, and we go to point B, well then, can I also get from point B to point C, right? So, period. So this is gonna allow me to see if I can travel, say, from uh, California to Nevada, and then from Nevada to somewhere else, okay? Um, now, in order for this 
rule in line four to work, then I probably should add a couple more facts here. So I could say something like, well, um, I can go from uh, Oregon to California, right? I can go from, oops, I can go from, let's see here, I can go from Nevada to California, okay? Oops, Nevada, I should probably just uh, type here. And I can go from Arizona to California. Okay, so line four is what a rule looks like. Added a few more facts here on lines nine through 11. Uh, and when we take a look at queries, uh, we'll see how this rule plays out. All right, so let's talk about some queries. Uh, let's go back to the console. Okay, and let's reload. I'll just hit the up arrow, right? And I'll reload demo. Okay, and so everything got read just fine. And so now what I can do, and I'll put this in one window to the left, and then I'll put my code over here on the right so we can just compare. Okay, so what I have is, is I've got a bunch of facts in here, lines six through 11, and then 15 through 17, and then I've also got a rule on line four, okay? So when I wanna run a query, what I do is, is a couple of things, okay? I can query, right, typing in the name of one of the rules, and I can say, all right, well, it is California next to Nevada, right? So when I type that in and hit enter, right, I get a response says true. So true is like, yes. What this says is, yeah, yeah, there California's next to Nevada, no problem. Now, when you're stuck here and it says true and there's a question mark, you know, this says, well, there may be additional answers. Okay, now what I wanted to ask was, is it possible to get from California to Nevada or are they um, next to each other? Fine. Now, if I hit semicolon, okay, now the way that prologue is checking through all the facts, um, you know, was trying another approach through a depth first search basically and came up with no. And that's okay, right? Because I just wanted to know if it was possible, if it's true that California is next to Nevada. And so I got the response that I wanted. More on this no thing here um, in a subsequent video, okay? Uh, so that's one way I can make a query. Another query that I could make would be to use a variable in the second part of the, the line, right? So variables start with uh, uppercase characters. So I could say, all right, well, where are all the places that I could travel to from California? Who's adjacent, okay? So you'll see now that the prologue inference engine goes through and says, oh, well, let me take a look here. So um, you specified California and I have to go through and try to fill in the gaps for the two. So California to Nevada, oh yeah, look, you can see right there on line six, right? So I'll hit semicolon and then that'll automatically advance me and Prolog's now gonna say, all right, well also to uh, Oregon, right? So you can see line seven, there's a rule there. So I'll hit semicolon to advance, right? And so then it'll say, yeah, to uh, Arizona. And you can see uh, that there's a match, right? So California matches against line eight and then there's Arizona and then we're done, okay? so. I can also say, um, you know, well, show me all the fruits that exist, right? It's because I put that in, in my knowledge base. So I could just say, well, show me um, all the fruits. And I could say, all right, so uh, say, just put X in here, right? And then I'll do a period, okay? So X is an orange, that's true, right? Don't know if that's one of the fruits. Apple, that's another one of my fruits in my knowledge base, pear. Awesome. Okay, so um, I could also ask, well, is an apple, according to my knowledge base, um, a fruit? Right? And it's gonna tell me, yeah, right? Uh, what if I put in here something that my knowledge base doesn't know about? So say like grapes, okay? Well then no, right? So yes, no, true, false. This is just letting me know Look, there's no entry in my knowledge base. I don't know what this is, right? So no, right? Okay, so next up, I'm gonna try rule uh, four, right? 
is it possible for us to go from, um, say, Oregon to um, Nevada, right? So what we'll do is, is we'll put in here, we'll say uh, travel from Oregon to Nevada, okay? And so the result is true, why? Because um, when I typed in travel, I'm trying to engage the rule on line four, right? And so when I do that, um, Oregon basically becomes, if you take a look on the right-hand side here, the if part, uh, becomes, takes the place of A, and then Prolog goes through and says, all right, well, from Oregon, where can I go? Well, I can go from Oregon to California, so California becomes B, and then the second next two starts off with Oregon as, or excuse me, as California as B, and so then uh, on the, the, the second part of the expression, the next two from for B and, and C, it basically then says, okay, well, from California, is there a match uh, for Nevada? And so there is because of fact six, okay? And so true uh, response, so it responds with true and says, okay, yeah, no, yep, no problem. You can, you can travel there, um, you know, and then uh, we're finished. We've, we've, we've verified that we can actually move from Oregon to Nevada. Now, uh, what would it look like if I can't? Well, let's see here. Can I travel from you know, uh, Oregon to Maine, right? So what's that gonna say? Uh, no, there is no, um, there is no Maine in my, in my knowledge base, right? And so this rule can't find a path. Uh, there is no fact Maine that says that, you know, for Maine even exists in, in my world, in my, in my knowledge base here. Okay, so last thing I want to do in this video um, is just show you the basics of comments, right? So line and block comments. Line comments in Prolog begin with a percent, right? So this is a line comment, right? And so uh, if I wanted to specify that, oh, well, okay, this is the following is a rule, right? Can I get from point A to point C through B. This is basically what this rule allows me to do, right? Uh, now, if I want to do block comments, and they're, you know, what, you, what you're what you used to, right? So, um, forward slash star and star forward slash, uh, this is a block comment, right? This is a block comment, okay? so. The following uh, lines are all facts. These are your two options. Okay, so let's go ahead and summarize what we talked about in this video. In this video, I was hoping to just get you started, right? I wanted to show you how to go and download, um, you know, a copy of Prolog, get that thing installed. I wanted to show you how to create your very first program and how to load it into memory. Uh, and I wanted to show you what a fact looks like, I wanted to show you what a rule looks like, I wanted to show you different ways to query your knowledge base, and I wanted to show you uh, comments, right? So there's a lot more to learn, but this is kind of the basics to get you going. Okay, so that's gonna bring this video to a close. If you felt that the video was useful, please consider giving the video a thumbs up and if you thought that the video sucked, well, then you've got that thumbs down button as an option as well. If you'd like to see more videos, if you're interested in more content from the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button. And as usual, if you're a student of mine and you have further questions, feel free to drop me an email or to stop by my office hours. Okay, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.